Hello everyone, welcome to this channel, Word of God is Truth. My name is Cherie, and if you've seen any of my videos before, you might notice that the background is different, and you might notice that I look different, and that's because this video is about vanity. It's my testimony dealing with it and how the Lord has been dealing with me to even get me to the point to be able to come before anybody like this without makeup. And this is my journey to holiness that is not only on the inside, but on the outside. I began to realize through the Holy Spirit sanctifying me and leading me into all truth that all the stuff that we do to ourselves, we are literally slaves slaves to vanity, slaves to the makeup, slaves to the fashion, slaves to this standard of beauty that is unattainable and it's unnatural and it didn't come from God. And some of you might already know this, but makeup came from fallen angels. It's talked about in the book of Enoch, all the things that they taught men and the daughters of men. And also, I'm sure you've heard about this, Jezebel, a witch, a false prophetess. It talked about how she painted herself. They were known to paint their eyelids, to do eyeliner and, and all these kind of things like that. Mascara, they did that all the way back then. I just want to start with Romans chapter 6 verse 16. It says, Know ye not that whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. We've made ourselves slaves to death by running after fashion, running after these worldly beauty standards. And we have to decide who we're going to be a slave to. Is it going to be this false standard of beauty that even the people that we see prancing around can't even reach? Or is it going to be how God created us in our natural state? And I decided a couple of days ago with the grace and the mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that I was going to make big moves this time. So let me get into my testimony. with. So I'm going to be talking about vanity and how the Lord has been trying to deal with my heart because I've been fighting him for years on this whole time that I've been saved and what I'm at about five years, over five years now. And I... I'll show it at the end. I actually made videos documenting the things that I was getting rid of and I'll talk about each one and why the Lord didn't let me keep them. And so not only has the Lord been dealing with me personally, but he began to put testimonies that I wasn't even looking for of women of all ages, young girls, older women, all these people that the Lord spoke to directly. Some of them he took to hell to show them some of the Christian women that were there because they chose vanity over him. These women have no connection to each other and nobody told them this as they grew closer to Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit was doing the sanctifying work in them into holiness, into purity, into modesty. They all have their own testimonies and I'm going to add all this stuff in the link so you can go watch these things so you can see what lit a fire under me that let me know that no, I haven't been tripping. This really has been the Lord telling me no, don't wear these things. Don't look like this. This. You don't need that. Be how I created you to be. And this is really hard for me to come before anybody like this. And even setting up for this video, I chose the this background because it represents nature. Nature's in its natural state, unaltered. And the Lord wouldn't even let me use lighting for this. So the lighting that you see is just lighting coming through the window because I wanted all the lights on, but the Lord said no. So here I am with this, you know, I don't have much left because I literally had to throw away everything that I had and I'm traveling right now. So I already didn't have a lot, but the little things that I did have, the Lord said no, because they're all inappropriate. But yeah, so I threw away everything on June 18th. The hail testimonies were terrifying. One of the people, at, her name is Rachel. She has a, a channel and I'm definitely going to put that in the link. The Lord really used her a lot with getting me to where I am, but I want to say it's like Rachel Mushala or or something like that. But um, again, it'll be in the link. But she made a post talking about the two Christians, two types of Christians that are on the broad road and they don't even realize it. And she spoke about the Christian that prays, that fasts, that loves the Lord, that has stopped doing a whole bunch of stuff that involves the world. But the one thing that they didn't give up was the way that they dressed. And dressing is the way that you carry yourself they were still dressing in seductive manners and just wearing things that the Lord doesn't approve of. And as I read that, I, it was just like an arrow through my heart because I'm like, that is me. 
it? And do I want to be that person that loses everything all because I couldn't give up makeup, because I couldn't stop wearing the jewelry, because I couldn't stop dressing seductively? Do I want to lose it all because of that? Is it worth it? Is it worth sacrificing and not doing all this stuff that is considered fun here and to still go to hell because I chose to look like the world and I'm not going to do that. I refuse to, to go to hell because... I couldn't give up these trivial things. It's not worth it. And so I'm an extreme person. So I got stuck rid of stuff very quickly. Stuff that you probably won't believe, but you'll see at the end. So let me just jump into it. I've shared in my testimony video that when I first got saved, I didn't get saved in the church. And I had just come out of going to a psychic and I was just the worldliest person that you could ever come into contact with. I was the one clubbing. I was the one drinking. I was the one doing edibles. I was the one that couldn't sit still. If I had any free time, I'm on a plane or I'm out and about doing some stuff. And I was the one that was extremely revealing with my dress. But I still will try and put a classy twist on it. So I might have on pants, but I might have on a shirt that is so open and low cut that you can see my belly button out. I used to really stress my mom out and she did a lot of praying for me and God answered her prayer and he spoke to her when I told her about what I had done getting rid of my stuff and my mom was so happy and the Lord spoke to her and said, I'm answering your prayer. And my mom said she started laughing and just praising God like she was so happy that her prayer had finally been answered. So back to it. So the night I got saved, I was coming from seeing a psychic because I just, I was into some new age stuff. I tried to astro project, all this kind of stuff. So I'm sitting outside of my apartment and I was living in Houston and I was terrified. And it was in that moment, although I didn't believe in the God of the Bible, I, I was Baha'i. I thought that all gods were the same and I wasn't seeking any of them. It was in that moment that it hit me that the only person that I could go to to save me from what that psychic had just told me was the God of the Bible, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so it was in that moment, the little that I knew that I, the Lord led me to use it. So I got out of my car and the Holy Spirit led me to go into my apartment to take off everything. I was wearing weave at the time. I was wearing makeup. And of course I was probably dressed worldly as well, but I stripped down to, to just me, to how I came into the world. I was naked. It and I threw myself on the floor and I cried out to God. And the only scripture I knew was that those who call on my name, on the name of Jesus, will be saved. And so I called on the name of Jesus and he saved me. I think it's not a coincidence that he had me come to him even in the beginning, stripped down to nothing. He didn't want me to come to him with makeup. I didn't know that there was anything wrong with makeup. I didn't know that there was anything wrong with weave. I didn't know that there was anything wrong with jewelry and all that stuff. But that's how the Lord had me come to him. That's how I met him. And you go back and think about it. Even with Moses, when he encountered Yah, God, the burning bush before he could come near he had to remove his shoes when we get close to God when we're truly coming into his presence he's going to tell you no 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 I am a holy God remove that remove this it is unholy to me. It is unclean. And so that's how I got saved. And you think that a person would remember that that was what the Holy Spirit left them to do. But, you know, I got saved, but I still held on to a lot of the old person that I was, the old man, you know. And so that's how it started. And, you know, most Christians, like, so if I would have got saved in a church, I would have just went up to the altar just like I was and just assumed that I was saved because they had me say a couple words. But but there was no action behind the words. I was truly seeking God and the Lord led me, showed me how to come to him. And so you get saved in the church and you look around the church, everybody's still wearing makeup. Everybody's still wearing jewelry. Everybody's still looking just like the world looks, still in fitted clothes, still in stuff, accentuating their body and their curves. So you think there's nothing wrong with it. You know, in Houston, you know, it was a certain church. They called it a club. It was just a church club. You know, people went in there looking the exact same way. And those are the churches that are attractive to us. But those are the churches that the Holy Spirit's not there. What's there are false manifestations of the Holy Spirit. It's it's not real. Let me keep on going. So after getting saved, the Lord had me to move back to Kansas City. And so I moved back to Kansas City, Kansas, because that's where I'm from. He didn't want me to stay in Houston. And there's plenty of reasons why, because I was a hot mess express down there. So taking me away from all the temptations and all the, the opportunities to 
run back into the world. So I went back to Kansas City, got an apartment, and I went through like a period of three weeks fasting, no communication with my family, and just being by myself in the presence of God. And and again, he had me to stop wearing weave. He had me to take off my makeup while I was fasting. One of the first things that I gave up when I got saved was worldly music. That happened immediately because I knew that that was something big for me that would draw me back into that lifestyle. And so I did a fast as soon as I got saved and I fast from music. I fasted from social media. I, I just literally cut myself off from the world. All I would do was read my Bible and listen to sermons, read my Bible sermons and Derek Prince. I was just binging on his sermons and, and we getting delivered right there at home, self-deliverance, because I still wasn't going to a church. God just had me being still and the Holy Spirit was teaching me and the Lord had me strip myself down again and during this period I even went and tried to buy some tunics like just long loose fitting tunics but they came in too small so I never even got a chance to wear them and once that period of fasting was over I went slowly right back into wearing makeup and all these things and it'll start with one thing like oh you know dark circles around my eyes so I'm like oh I'm just gonna put a little bit of concealer around here and I'm just gonna be okay but it always progresses and it always will so you'll go from that to adding on some blush, to adding on some bronzer, to adding on doing your eyebrows, to adding on eyeliner, mascara, all these things. And then you're adding on lip colors and lip liner and all that stuff. So it's just a slow progression back into what you were doing. And so that is what kept happening to me. And so I went through a recent, very rough season, and I've spoke about it in other videos. So I'm not going to go into detail about that. But I took a contract. I'm in a totally different state now where I have no family, no friends here. I'm just in seclusion. And the Lord began to deal with me again. And so I initially thought that these were just things the Lord didn't want me to do while I was fasting. I never let it sink in that he didn't want me to do it, period. And so the Lord started making me feel uncomfortable about the underwear that I was wearing. And I would wear these Spanx lace underwear just so that there's no panty line, but the Lord made me feel uncomfortable wearing them. And one night I felt really uncomfortable, but I still kept them on and I went to sleep and I got an attack in my sleep and in my dream, I saw the underwear, a different form of them, but what was in common was the color of them. And I knew then I'm like, okay, the Lord is trying to deal with me on my underwear. And so the Lord led me to literally just order white cotton, regular underwear, nothing special about them. And I couldn't understand why until I started watching some of these people's testimony videos. And someone says something, the Lord does not like lace. And so I'm like, oh my gosh. So it wasn't necessarily about the color or the print. It was about the fact that all the underwear that I wore, they were always lace. And so I'm just like, wow. So that was, you know, one of the things that I got rid of. Of everything that had lace in it, bra, underwear, anything lace. And so the Lord has put me in a place where I am in seclusion to where he can really deal with me without any interference. And so the Lord started adding other things to the list. So he started making me not wear perfume while I was fasting. And that was something new. And so I, I stopped wearing it. But then like, even when the fast would be over, I would go to use it and the Lord would make me feel uncomfortable doing it. I'm like, okay. And so then during this recent this season of fasting, the Lord started making me feel uncomfortable wearing leggings. And I'm like, okay, so I got rid of most of them and I bought a whole bunch of sweatpants. And I'm like, okay, you don't want me to wear leggings because it's too revealing and I'm kind of shapely. So so that makes sense. So I just rationalized it like that. And I heard the Lord had already been dealing with me on the tops that I would wear. So I bought a whole bunch of tops that went up to my neck. And then I was going through my pants and I would like when I would start to go get dressed, I, I would go throw some jeans on because I love jeans. And the Lord started making me feel uncomfortable wearing my ripped jeans. And there was one time I was in Express because I wear a lot of Express jeans, or I did. And I was in the fitting room. I'm like, okay, Lord, how are these? Can I buy these? What do you think about these? And he told me, no, 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 no. And I'm like, none of them? I'm like, I must be tripping. This isn't God telling me that I can't have any of them. And seeing the Christian women's channels that had testimony 
testimony. So I was trying to deal with me about wearing pants, period. And I wasn't getting it because I never heard of that before. Never had anybody tell me that there was anything wrong with wearing pants. And so I didn't realize that that was what God was trying to tell me. And again, there's multiple testimonies that I'm going to put in the link where all these women that never heard of anything about, about there being anything wrong with wearing jeans, the Lord addressed that to them, told them immediately, stop wearing these. And I'm just like, wow, Lord, this is what you've been trying to tell me all along. And so with these testimonies of these women going to hell and seeing these Christian women there that lost it all because they, they wanted to look like the world, it was absolutely terrifying to me. So I'm not playing anymore because we don't know our expiration date. We don't know when our time is up. And so I'm not going to waste time. I'm going to do it now. I'm going to choose God. And so every other time the Lord would work on me about stuff, I would always backslide. I would start wearing the makeup again. I would start buying inappropriate clothes again to replace the ones that I got rid of because every time I would be fasting, the Lord would have me get rid of stuff and I would willingly do it. But then I would make excuses like, oh, I have this event coming up. I need to buy something for this. I have this trip coming up and I want to look like this. And so I go right back into restocking my closet with everything that I got rid of. So after the testimonies, the Holy Spirit just bore witness to the truth in these testimonies. You know, these people have no agenda. I have no agenda. You know, they're not making money off getting you, giving the testimony of what the Lord told them to say, stop wearing these things. That they're, That's not for my daughters. There is a way that daughters of the Most High are supposed to look. And I have been absolutely guilty of not looking that way. But because my heart was full of vanity and it's all I knew, I kept reverting back to that same cycle, but not this time. And so I was supposed to go on family girls trip and I started buying all these things, all these super cute dresses for a worldly standard and tops and all these shoes and all that kind of stuff preparing for this trip. And I knew this stuff wasn't appropriate. And so I was talking to God. I'm like, okay, God, let me just get through this trip and then I'll get rid of everything and I won't go back to it. This is just a season. And the Lord said to me, it's a way of life. This has been my way of life. The season has been me going into seasons of fasting, but this is my constant. The, the thing that has been a constant in my life has been worldliness in the way that I dress. So I gave up the sex. I gave up the, the worldly music. I, I gave up going to the clubs and I gave up heavy drinking and I gave up all that stuff, but I held on to the way that I dressed. And so when he said it's a way of life, I was like, oh, okay. And I had recently watched some other testimony video and it was a man's testimony of how the Lord was dealing with him, his fleshly nature and the way that he looked at women, even though he had completely dedicated his life to God, you know, there was lust in him that made him unclean. And the Lord told him, if I came today, I wouldn't take you because you have all these things in your life that you haven't dealt with. And so that was something that scared me. It's like having all these testimonies of how daughters of the most high are supposed to be dressing. It's just like all this stuff has been happening back to back to back. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm out here in a place of seclusion. I can make this transition and I can get used to seeing myself for myself, not covering me up with makeup, hiding my insecurities, hiding the fact that I feel like I have a big forehead, hyperpigmentation, dark circles around my eye. I'm not going to hide this stuff anymore. I'm going to be me and I'm going to trust in the Lord. And some of you might feel like, well, how can I get rid of all this stuff, stop doing all this stuff, and I want a husband? Well, the thing is, you have been doing it your way, our way this whole time, and it hasn't produced a husband. So why not try it the Lord's way and let him move on your behalf because you're being obedient. And so I just encourage you, if the Lord's been dealing with your heart on this subject, like he's been dealing with mine, just take a step in faith and know that God created you the way that he saw fit to, that we are beautiful in his eyes. We don't have to meet this world standard of beauty. We are who we are. Let the makeup go. Let the weave go. Let the jewelry go. Let the, the pants go. Just, just dive into modesty. 
because when we take these little baby steps, like I was trying to do like, oh, you know, I'll stop doing this. You always run back because it's still available to you. You got to get rid of everything. You just got to throw it away. So it's not an option for you. And the only way it's an option, if you're going to go back to the store and buy all that stuff back. And I know about y'all, but my makeup was expensive. Everything I got rid of was expensive and I'm not going back to repurchase it. I did it to make it not an option for me anymore. And as the Lord was dealing with me on this, I realized that because of my decision to hold on to my worldly dressing, I had to think back on how many men that I caused to stumble. You know, if you're a shapely person and you're wearing something that's not hiding something, it's inevitable that someone's going to look upon you and notice your curves, you know, notice some type of attractiveness, worldly attractiveness. And that man, you know, single or married, you're causing them to commit fornication in their hearts or you're com causing them to commit adultery. And let's just say maybe they'll look at somebody no matter what. But the problem is you in that moment were the source of a sin for somebody else on top of us being in sin because of what we're wearing. We're causing our brothers to stumble. We're, we're storing up wrath for our brothers and we're storing up wrath for ourselves in that day of judgment. And I know that when I meet God, I want to hear, well done, my daughter. That's all I want to hear. I'm terrified. You know, the more, the closer I get to God, the more wretched I realize that I am, the more that I realize there's so much that still needs to be dealt with. So if you're walking around thinking that you got it all together, you better believe Believe you're in worse condition than the person that knows that they don't have it together because you're deceived. Because when you get closer to God in the presence of his holiness, you start to see yourself because God's holiness is a reflection of the fact that you are so wretched. You are so unclean. There's so many things that need to be dealt with. So if you think you got it together, I beg you to start fasting and praying, going on your knees and asking the Lord to reveal what needs to be worked out of you. Anyways, don't want to get sidetracked. But to support what I just said about making our brother stumble, Matthew chapter 5 verse 28 it says but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman and lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart and notice it says with her her. So we're both in sin. That's fornication on both sides, adultery on both sides, because you're causing someone to do it. So I am sharing this journey to make the outside of me match what the Lord is doing on the inside of me so that I can be pleasing to him so that I can be in his presence. I mean, just think that the way we're choosing to dress, how we're choosing worldliness and vanity over him, that this is a barrier to us stepping into the destiny that God has for us step it, this is a barrier to us being used completely used by God because we've touched unholy things not only have we touched it we've put it on ourselves we're wearing it we're wearing barriers so these can be barriers to our healing barriers to our, our deliverance barriers to us understanding our calling of what we're supposed to do you know so I want to be used by God. I have no purpose of being here on this earth outside of being used by him. Otherwise, nothing matters. All this stuff is fading away. So I just want to take a look at some holiness scriptures and a couple others. And then I'm going to get into showing the things that I got rid of. And like I said, you're probably going to be very shocked. You know, God in his grace had me in a place where I didn't even care. Like I could throw these things away. And I was a person that loved expensive things. So, so. I want to look at Luke chapter 1 verse 74 through 75. It says that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. God didn't deliver us out of the hand of the enemy. He didn't deliver us from death so we can run around still looking like the world. He's expecting holiness and righteousness from us and we can't do it without looking like it on the outside as well because if we're not we're causing people to stumble and we're putting up that barrier to us being able to get closer to God. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 through 2. It says, Wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And I want to pause right there because vanity is a weight and it leads us astray and it leads us to lead other people astray astray because we're running after the things of this world and we're encouraging other people to do it too. It's like we're like a billboard for the world, but we call ourselves Christians. 
It doesn't work like that. I mean, keep on going. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. He gave his life for us. He gave his only begotten son so that we could make it in to be with him. Why can't we give up these worldly things for him? If you sacrificed your child to save a group of people and they didn't follow the instructions that you set before them, would you have mercy on them on the day of judgment? Would you? Because he's not going to. If we choose the world, if we choose to look like the world instead of looking like who he has called us to be and acting like it, if both don't match up, we're going to hear, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 12 verses 4 through 11. It says, ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. How hard are we fighting to get away from the things that we know to be sin in our lives, the things that we know that are unpleasing to our God. It says, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without ch chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much more rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterwards it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. I cherish the fact that the Lord has been chastening me and dealing with me me with the way that I dress because he's doing it because he loves me. He's doing this. He's having his daughter speak out about this because he loves us and he doesn't want us to be separated because of worldliness. So please take heed to this video the ones that I put in the description box, please take heed. And if the Lord isn't dealing with you on these issues, that means that you're probably not in true relationship with him. And he's trying to get you to turn to him. So if you're seeing this, if you ran into any other videos, let this be confirmation that it's time for you to turn. And we are so close to the end. We don't have time to play. And also remembering there's people of all ages dying every day, every second. You are not safe. We are not safe if we are not walking according to his word. Let's look at Matthew chapter 5 verse 29. It says, if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of your members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. We have to remove what is a stumbling block to us because it's not worth our life. It's not worth eternity in hell. And the witnesses that try to correct you will be playing in your mind over and over again. And you'll be there saying, Lord, why didn't I listen to them? Why didn't I just give this up? It wasn't worth it. If I could do it again, I would. Lord, please have mercy on me. That's how it's going to be. So let it go now. It said, cut it off. So my version of cutting it off is I'm getting rid of this stuff so that I have no more access to it. I'm getting rid of the makeup so that I can't run back to it. I'm getting rid of the sale ads and all the emails or promotions for clothing, all the text messages telling me when it's a sale. I'm blocking all those things. I'm unsubscribing so that that is not a stumbling block for me. I'm cutting it off. Get rid of everything. Don't give yourself an option to run back to it. And if these, these worldly things are causing you to stumble, get rid of them. Cut it off if it's offending you because it is. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 through 17. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Without holiness the inside matching the outside. Nobody will see God. Don't fool yourself into thinking you can slide in there on some greasy grace. No, if you weren't obedient and you still chose the world, you won't be with him. Let's keep on going to 15. Looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God 
lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. All those testimonies talk about people in hell crying out, Christians in hell crying out in repentance, but repentance is for the living. It's not for the dead. And repentance calls for a change in action. Your repentance should be producing a fruit. But look at this. It says Esau sold his birthright for a piece of meat for some soup. Are you going to sell your birthright? Are you going to sell your place in heaven in the presence of God for worldliness, for vanity, for makeup, for clothing, for jewelry, for pants? Are you going to sell it for that? Is it worth the birthright of us being born again Christians, being a new creature in Christ? Is it worth giving up that position? It's not. So let's look at this word holiness in Hebrew and we're going to look at it in the Greek. So the word holiness in Hebrew is Kadesh and it means a Apartness, holiness, sacredness, separateness, apartness, sacredness, holiness of God, of places, of things, set apartness. And the strong says a sacred place or thing, rarely abstractly sanctity, consecrated, dedicated, hallowed, holiness, holy, saint, sanctuary. And in the Greek, the Greek word for holiness is hagiasmos. And the Thayer's lexicon says consecration, purification, the effect of consecration, sanctification of the heart and life. And the strong says properly purification that is a state of purity concretely by hebraism a purifier holiness sanctification and so looking at those definitions without even getting into the scriptures because we're going to get into them but holiness calls for separateness you're not separate we are not separate if we look like the world we're supposed to be peculiar we're not supposed to look like them we're not supposed to act like them we're not supposed to talk like them we have to be the complete package so let's look at this word Vanity. Vanity is the Hebrew word shawl, and it means emptiness, vanity, falsehood, makeup. You break that word apart, makeup. You're making up something. When someone says somebody made that up, that means they're lying. We are presenting a lie of who we are. It's a falsehood. Well, let's keep on going. Emptiness, nothingness, vanity, emptiness of speech, lying, worthlessness. When something is vanity, even when you think about the word vanity itself, I remember like there's some magazine. I think I've heard of called Vanity Fair. Like you, the mirrors that we sit in front of with the lights is called a vanity. The place where we sit to do our makeup, to do our hair, it's like an altar set up for vanity to the God of vanity, to these marine spirits. It's an altar to them. And so we know that everything that has to do with the kingdom of darkness, the enemy came to, to steal, kill, and to destroy. And a lot of this is done through telling a lie. You know, it's a lie that we can do do these things and be okay with God and that he doesn't care about it. He only cares about the inside. That's a lie. Both have to match up. Us wearing the makeup, it's a lie. Us wearing the weaves, it's a lie. It's not ours. We're we're making up a look that's not real. But let's keep on going. The strong says in the sense of desolating, evil as destructive, literally ruin or morally, especially guile. And guile means it's connected with lying, figuratively idolatry. That is exactly exactly what vanity is. We are making idols of ourselves, idols of an image that is not real. It is straight up idolatry that how much time we spend in the mirror, how much time we spend on makeup, how much time we spend shopping, how much time we spend trying to get dressed, how much time we spend trying to just put everything together in the perfect way so we can walk and we can be showstoppers and shut it down. It is all vanity. You know, maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but I know I'm not. You know, you feel good about yourself when people are turning and looking at you. We're feeling good about the fact that we're causing people to sin and love after us and then the encouragement is when other women give us compliments and we're like oh yeah I, I do have it together so they like this I'm gonna do more of it I'm gonna be a little bit more extra with it you know it always pushes you to the next step you're never satisfied sin is never satisfied you know it starts with minimal makeup and then it gets to the point where we're looking like clowns out here but let's keep on going with that definition it says uselessness as deceptive objectively also adverbally in vain false a lie lying vain vanity so there is nothing good that comes along with 
anything dealing with vanity and that's what fashion is in every sense of it it's all vanity let's look at proverbs chapter 30 verses 8 through 9 it says remove far from me vanity and lies again makeup is a lie weave is a lie these nails and stuff they're lies give me neither poverty nor riches feed me with food convenient for me lest i be full and deny thee and say who is the lord or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. Now this says, remove far from me vanity. And this person is saying, you know, and I forgot to mention this earlier. One of my periods of fasting, the Lord dealt with me on my nails. And so I already wasn't supposed to have nails. And so he kind of dealt, he started dealing with me on the nails, you know, probably like two, two, three years ago. And so I work with babies, NICU, and you're not supposed to have polish. You're not supposed to have nails past a certain length. And so I was going on a trip and I'm like, okay, I know I'm not supposed to have these nails, but I'm gonna do it just for this trip. And then I'm going to take them off. And I had them done. And the Lord was really dealing with me. It's like, I couldn't stop staring at these nails. It's like, I felt the mourning of the Holy Spirit because I had those nails on. And so I was like, you know what? I'm done getting nails. And I just sat there and I, I got them off, but I tried to justify, okay, so God just doesn't want me to wear fake nails. So I'll wear my own nails and I'll just get polish, get gel polish, shellac or whatever. And so I did that for a while. But then again, I started staring at my nails and I'm like, I knew that I again, grieving the Holy Spirit. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna get natural colors. And so I was just wearing natural colors and I stopped it on my hands. I was just putting natural colors like see-through pinks on my toes and I still felt grieved about it. So the contract before the one I'm in now, God was dealing with this. So I threw everything away. And then I'm like, okay, how about this? I'll wear press on nails, like the glue on ones, because that came back in and was big. And I'll just wear them for whatever occasion. And then I'll take them back off and I'll be good. And so that's what I was doing for a while. And uh, the Lord dealt with me with that. And so I threw everything away. And that was one thing that I haven't gone back to. So I haven't been wearing any nails, any polish like this. This is just my natural nails, no clear polish, no nothing. I just, I just stopped everything as far as nails. But anyways, back onto it. So now let's look at 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 15. It says, And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers and his testimonies, which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and became vain and went after the heathen that were round about them concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. When we're going after all these worldly things, we're literally rejecting God's statutes, his standard of how his children are supposed to look. And I want to let you know, I'm probably going to say that this is like part one of this vanity because I want to show you all my journey and how the Lord is redressing me. You know, right now I have nothing. I, the only skirt that I have is a, a oversized long jean skirt and I didn't wear it before because it was too big because I'm like, you know, I want something to be a little bit more fitted. And so I've been wearing this skirt for the last three days and all I have are oversized t-shirts and I've been looking like a little old lady and I don't... I don't, I don't really care because I know it's pleasing to God and I feel free, free to not be a slave to this standard of beauty anymore, to just learn how to be happy with myself, learn how to work with my hair. Clearly I haven't learned with it. It's, you know, I, yeah, I've been walking around looking like a lion out here, but it's okay. I pulled it back just for this video, but I also bought some wraps that I'm going to start playing with. And I've been watching a couple videos to learn how to properly wrap your hair and putting your hair in a ponytail on top and then putting the wrap on so that's what I'm going to be experimenting with also you know when I go to pray at night I cover my head when I pray because the scripture says that a woman ought to cover her hair when she prays or prophesies so I do that before I sleep but I was just thinking like what about all the other times that I pray throughout the day and I'm not covered like when I just start praying in tongues just walking and doing stuff you know I kind of want to have something with me all the times and the days that I decide to wear a wrap it'll be easy for me I can just pray whenever I want to without having to go grab something because I really want to start living out the standard that God has put in his word 
because it's already in my heart. Now I want everything to match up. So no, I don't think doing all these things is my way into heaven. This doesn't make me saved. You know, we're saved because we believe and we've made a decision to follow God, to be obedient to him and to, you know, live a life of righteousness through his grace and his mercy, making a habit, a daily habit of repenting and putting things before him and not just saying it with our words, but saying, Lord, I don't want to do this anymore. Forgive me. Show me how to come out of this. Help me to walk in newness. Help me to turn and change my mind about this. And so when, when you're walking with God, like letting this stuff go, it's not so hard because you know that he's with you. You know that he's pleased. He's encouraging you. And, and I hope, you know, finding those videos of those other people where the Lord was working with them on letting this stuff go, it's almost like it's a community. You know, we look around, we go outside, everybody has on makeup, everybody's wearing what they want to wear. You know, they're just doing them, but the world has been made smaller through you YouTube, by the internet and being able to connect with people. So when you start feeling discouraged, you can pull up a video. I'm like, you know what? I see my sister doing it. She's unashamed. She's fighting to stand out, fighting to be different, fighting to be set apart. And I'm going to keep on doing it with her. So we can go to these videos to encourage ourselves. And, and if you do this, you post a video, encourage other people and start adding the people that I don't even know how to do this on YouTube because I haven't done that much, but start adding people so they can know, hey, you're helping me. You're encouraging me. You know, you're not alone. And we need that because I am completely alone right now. So I've been sharing what I'm learning with my mother and my sisters. And so, you know, that's going to be my little small in-person community. But we also have to come together as daughters of the most high and encourage each other and know that this isn't just something for Muslims. This isn't just something for, you know, different Indian cultures to be covered. No, this is what God wants for his children. You know, we don't have to use seduction to draw people into us. We let the Holy Spirit draw and we have a true light and not a false light. Anyways, back on it. So that scripture was talking about rejecting the statutes of God and going after vanity and joining in with the, the word calls heathen. And it, the word heathen, it sounds bad, but it, it really just means people that don't believe. And so we're joining in with all these people that don't believe in the Most High and Yah, Yahuwah, Jesus. Jesus, Yesu, Yeshua, whatever you want to identify him by, but they're not following him, but we're running after them to look like they look instead of drawing them into us and how we look, you know, instead of being followers, we got to start being leaders. Ecclesiastes chapter two, verse 11, it says, then I looked on all the works that my hands had brought and on the labor that I had labored to do and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit. And there was no profit under the sun. All the hours that we put into making up ourselves, putting on a falsehood, it is all vanity. We don't profit from it. All we do is cause people to sin. We're sinning and we attract people that God doesn't have for us because true men of God that the Lord has really worked over their heart, they're going to want somebody that is more in a natural state. They're not going to want the falsehood. And so we're not going to attract things that are godly by looking like the world in, in any way. You're not going to attract godly girlfriends. You're not going to attract godly men and the ones that you might attract in church if they're if they're attracted to you while you're looking like that it's because they're just worldly too and nothing good is really going to come from it so it's it's all vanity it's all vexation of spirit you know we're just bringing hardships on ourselves by not doing it god's way because he wants us to do this for a reason so that we don't attract wolves and foxes. Ephesians chapter four, verses 17 through 19. It says, this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the, un having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Like I said, when we follow sin, sin is never satisfied. Sin always is going to have a greed to it, no matter what the area is. Like I said, if it starts with makeup, you're going to want more and more makeup. And then the style of makeup is going to change. So then you got to go chase after this style and you got to, you just got to keep acquiring all these things. And what does it profit us? 
All we're doing is looking like the world, storing up wrath for ourselves, causing people to sin and wasting our time and wasting our money. Just think how much money you could save if you stop shopping, if you stop wasting your money on this expensive makeup and on the jewelry and all the fads and all the accessories and all the shoes. If you stop it, how much further in life we would be if we start trying to attract God, attract the Holy Spirit versus the people of this world. What can they do? For, they don't, they can't save us. They don't secure your entry into the kingdom of heaven. Psalms chapter 119 verses 37 through 38. It says, turn away my eyes from beholding vanity and quicken thou me in thy way. Establish thy word unto thy servant who is devoted to thy fear. This is what we should be praying. Turn my eyes away from beholding vanity, from wanting to chase after vanity and quicken me in your way. Deliver me from evil. Pull me towards you, your holiness and your grace and mercy. Lord, help me to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and establish me in you, Lord, in your word, in your calling. Help me to walk in the fear of the Lord because this process came about because I fear the Lord. I fear that day of judgment. I fear being separated from him. You know, some people think about heaven and they think about the rewards that they'll have and all these kind of things like that. When I think of heaven, I just think about falling at the feet of Jesus and laying there Curled up at his feet. I, my mind can't really even go past that because that's all I want. I just want to fall at his feet and worship him and be in his presence. So, sorry. But yeah. So Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. All this stuff that we do, all the things that we have Put ourselves in bondage. We bound ourselves to this image of beauty that is not even real. It's a, a deceitful image. It says beauty is vain. It it goes away. It doesn't last. We all are going to grow old. And if we stay a slave to vanity, we will never be able to comfortably grow old. We won't be able to accept that our hair is green. We won't be able to accept that our skin isn't the same. We won't be able to accept that our bodies are changing if we don't rebuke this spirit of vanity. If we don't cast it out, if we don't deny our flesh, we will be enslaved for a lifetime. And you won't be able to be at peace and be happy with the fact that the Lord has blessed you with a long life. I know that's one of the things that I've thought about. Like, I, like Lord, I don't want to get old. Like, I don't want to have wrinkles. I don't want this. And so that compels you to go into a whole nother area of stuff, buying all these expensive skin products because you don't want to your skin to go to waste and stuff like that. Instead of us just trusting in the Lord, trusting that he's going to preserve us the way that he sees fit. But again, that scripture says a woman that fears the Lord, she is to be praised. That is true beauty. You know, true beauty is when the Holy Spirit is in us. We're walking in the fear of the Lord and his light is shining through us, a light that the world cannot produce. It's something supernatural that people are going to see in you. It doesn't have to be connected to beauty. It's something that draws people in. The Holy Spirit draws people in to, to use you as a vessel to save people. That is the light that we want to be. First Peter chapter 3, verses 3 through 5, it says, who's adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair, that's braiding the hair, all the styles that we do and, and all that kind of stuff is not pleasing to God because it's something that draws attention. It's a it's a pride. It creates a pride. And, and I'll get to that in a second. But the plating of hair, the wearing of gold and the putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. And I want to pause there. A meek and quiet spirit is not one that's going to be putting on things that are going to draw attention to it. You know, a meek and quiet spirit is going to put on things that are conservative, that are modest, that it, that's not going to draw the wrong type of attention to you. A meek and quiet spirit is going to let the Holy Spirit draw people in. Because which in the sight of God is of great price. Us walking around full of makeup and all this stuff, it is of very low value to God. It is disgusting to God. Like I said, it's a barrier to God. 
God, when we do these things, when we try and change what he created, when we try and tell God that he made a mistake, that we're not pretty enough. Verse five, it says, for after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves. So the, the holy women of God were dressed in meekness, in a quiet spirit, in modesty. They weren't adorning themselves with weave and all these elaborate braids and wearing jewelry and all these kind of things to accessorize the outside of them. They were concerned with building up the inside of them and letting the inside radiate outward. That's how we decorate ourselves in the spirit when we work on the inside of us. And I looked up that word in verse three that says apparel. Apparel is the Greek word hemation. The there's lexicon says it's a garment of any sort. Garments, the cloak or mantle and tunic. The upper garment, the cloak or mantle. And the strong says it's a dress or inner or outer apparel, cloak, clothes, garment, raiment, rope, vesture. I looked up that word mantle. That word mantle means a loose sleeveless garment worn over other clothes, a cloak. And definition B says a figurative cloak symbolizing preeminence or authority. So that scripture was talking about where it says in verse three of the putting on of apparel, this is talking about putting on something that pushes you forward. It's something that draws attention. It's a mark of authority on you. God said, don't don't do that to draw attention to yourself. You know, when we put these things on, it causes us to strut around in pride. You know, our the things that we wear, it shows a pride in us, a pride in our bodies. It's a pride in our physical appearance. And none of it is a reflection of what's on the inside of us. Well, it actually is. The Lord was showing me there's still worldliness in your heart. And the reflection of that is in the way that you dress. But the Lord knows that that's not my desire to be this way. And so he's changing things in me and his grace and mercy. He's, he's given me the grace to be able to choose him over worldliness. But yeah, we shouldn't be wearing things that put on display a pride in ourselves, walking around with the mantle that says, Hey, look at me, look at me. I have a nice body. Look at me, look at, look at my expensive stuff. You know, we shouldn't be like that. And that is exactly how we are. We buy something cute. We can't wait to go put it on and strut around and wait for somebody to compliment us wait to see who's gonna look you know how many heads turn and all that kind of stuff like that that's exactly what it's for on that subject let's look at this scripture in Isaiah chapter 3 verses 16 through 24 it says moreover the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet now, I'm just gonna pause right there I just said when we put on stuff it makes us walk with the pride it makes us put our heads up just like the scripture says i'm gonna say it again it says the daughters of zion are haughty prideful they walk around with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes like i said it makes you look around like who's looking i know you want me i look good i know and stretch forth necks and so <laughs> while i was going through getting rid of things i got to shoes and i'm like hmm, okay lord what's up with shoes like what shoes do you not want me to wear so i looked up youtube videos on should christian women wear shoes and a video came up in a scripture that i probably read over who knows how many times it never caught my eye and this this pastor he broke down the scripture and i was like oh my god this is talking about heels and he was saying how heels change the way that you walk so we already know that it pushes up our butts, it makes calf muscles come out, but it also changes the position of your head while you walk. It makes it be lifted up. And where it says walking and mincing as they go, mincing is the swaying of the hips. You know, you're walking, trying to draw people's attention, you know, or it's just how you naturally are because you have a seductive nature. I had a very seductive nature. So it would be, I could be walking regular and not even realize it, but then people will say something to me about my walk. Like, oh, you have a really such and such walk. And I can't tell you how many times I, I was told that. And so I try and make a conscious effort to change the way that I walk now so that it's not drawing any unnecessary attention. And it really shouldn't be a problem now because the way I dress, this, this jean skirt that I've been sporting for the last days it draws no attention let me tell you but yeah so let's look at that word it says walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet that word that word tinkling meant like a the a clanking like when you wear heels a tinking of the heels is something when 
you hear it like you hear heels so it'll make you look that direction like who where's that sound coming from who has those heels on so men know that sound and they will turn and look just like women know it too and then you might turn around like you're not looking with interest you're just looking like who's this over here sounding extra you know but the point of it is to draw attention it is all steeped in seduction and so that was something that I saw so I'm like oh, okay this is stuff that I wasn't expecting to have to get rid of but I did but we're gonna get into all that so let's keep on going with this scripture therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion and the Lord will discover their secret part because of the pride of the daughters of Zion the daughters of God's chosen people because of their pride he smote them with scabs something that caused hair loss you know we see this with um with different people of color different scalp conditions alopecia things that will make the the hair fall out and it's not even always natural but it's because of the stuff that we're putting in our hair that causes hair loss as well because we're doing stuff to our hair that's unnatural the chemicals are causing reactions in our scalp so it's like a, a cycle that we're bringing on ourselves when our bodies are screaming out stop doing this to me but we keep on doing it because we're addicted to vanity we're addicted to trying to look a certain way trying to preserve ourselves to look like the world but let's keep on going verse 18 it says in that day the lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling or ornaments around their feet so not only were they wearing something that was similar probably to heels but they also had on ankle bracelets that, that jingled to draw more attention and i remember looking up what the ankle bracelet represented because i was wearing ankle bracelet this was something i got rid of during one of my fasting periods and i looked up what the ankle bracelet was people used to wear ankle bracelets to show that they were married but they were still open for adulterous relationships and that was what people wore ankle bracelets for to to let people know hey you can still get at me and so that's what they used to do in ancient times we wear it now for fashion but that that's how it started and so I stopped wearing them once I found out that that's what it was because I kept feeling uncomfortable when I and finally after I felt uncomfortable for so long I'm like okay let me just look it up and so that's what I found but let's keep on going it says in the day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round tires like the moon now I'm not gonna lie I didn't actually to look up that part of it i might look it up and maybe address that round tires like the moon in the next video but like i said i'm going to be documenting this process to encourage you to show you the things that the lord has made me feel comfortable to wear because he has said no to most things and yeah but let's keep going verse 19 the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers the bonnets i don't know what mufflers are so i, I should have looked that up too but the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs so they were wearing all kind of stuff they were wearing decorations decorated head wraps they had all kind of stuff on their legs so the ankle bracelet was already addressed so they had other stuff on their legs that decorated their legs and you think about the shoes that we wear today we, we got shoes and stuff that lace up our leg ultra high leg boots that go up to our thigh that just draw more attention to our thighs and our hips and, and everything you know I had it all the tablets and the earrings the rings and the nose jewels all these things we're still doing today the changeable suits of apparel you know we've got I'm going to talk about me I ridiculous closets ridiculous like people could go shopping in my closets when I would get rid of clothes my sisters and my mom would all come to you know see what I was getting rid of there was just so much stuff would be stuff with tags on it because I was addicted to shopping like if I'm sitting there bored I shop if I get stressed out about something I start shopping it was like therapy for me so yeah the rings and the nose jewels the changeable suits of apparels and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils and it came to pass that instead of sweet smell there shall be a stink and instead of a girdle a rent and instead of a well set hair baldness and instead of a stomacher a girding of sackcloth and a burning instead and so I looked up because I'm like why would it say a tinkling when describing the sound when they walked when clearly it was something different from an ankle bracelet that made noise or something around the leg it was something that sounded like heels so I'm like did they wear heels in ancient times so I started looking for that and sure enough there are all kind of ancient sculptures set 
depicted women wearing heels. And so here's one of them. Here's another one. And here's a little screenshot of what they wore in ancient Egypt. So they were wearing heels. And remember, they came out of Egypt. And so they took on some of the forms of the way that they dressed in their fashions. They were wearing heels back then. So they you know, these daughters of Zion could have been wearing heels. They had heels on top of ankle braces, on top of leg decorations, on top of all kinds of stuff. They were just decked out to the fullest. And, and the Lord said because of their pride that he was going to punish them because of the pride that was in their appearance, because of their disobedience, because of their worldliness, basically, that they weren't being separate from the nations. They were looking just like them. And we went over that other scripture that said that the Holy women of ancient times they dressed themselves in meekness in a meek and quiet spirit clearly these daughters of zion they weren't doing this 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 was a worldly class of the daughters of zion but there were still some that were dressed in a meek and quiet spirit that that the lord was referring to let's look at first timothy chapter 2 verses 9 through 10 in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. So again, we have another list of things that is not pleasing to God, that you can't be modest if you're wearing all these other things that are drawing attention to you, drawing attention to your hair, drawing attention to your, your, you know, your neck, your, your arms, your accessories, your feet, all this kind of stuff like that. And it says costly array. Like I told you all, I had to get rid of some expensive things, but again, we'll go over it later, but we're supposed to be in modest apparel that covers us. That's not revealing our shape. You know, what's under our clothes is supposed to be for the man that the Lord has for us, for our husband. It's not to put on display for just anybody to see, you know, know if if anybody can have it what value is there in it value is in things that are hard to come by the lord gave me a dream this was like oh a couple of days before i decided to get rid of things and in this dream i was walking out of somewhere it was a funeral all the people around me were taller i'm pretty short i'm only five two i stopped and i put on these high heels they were high like red bottoms and i had those and so it was a, actually a black pair a black leather pair of red bottoms that I had already gotten rid of one of the times the Lord was dealing with me with having things when I first moved to Kansas so I actually sold a whole bunch of stuff I sold red bottoms Louis Vuitton purses Gucci purses Gucci belts like I sold all this stuff to get rid of it because it had ties to things people in my past and I didn't want to be bringing anything from my past into the future that God had for me because those items were linked to people there were gifts from people that were in my life so I had gotten rid of them. So in this dream, I'm putting on these shoes. As soon as I start, I put the shoes on. It's like, I'm taller. I just felt this pride. And so I was walking just like that scripture said in a halty manner. And after a couple steps in those shoes, I lost my balance and I basically kind of stumbled in a circle and I fell down once I put those shoes on. And so that was just a foreshadowing of God about to deal with me about wearing high heels. And it made sense, you know, when you're wearing those things, we can't walk properly. We can't walk for God. We can't finish the race. We end up going backwards. I went into a circle. I stumbled in a circle and fell down. That's what happened. We end up laying over on the sideline. We're out the race. We're on the ground trying to fight to keep these worldly things. And so that was that dream. Uh, I'm almost through the scriptures. Probably like, when are you going to show the stuff that the Lord led you to get rid of? Second Corinthians chapter 6, verses 17 through 18. It says, wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you and will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. And I mentioned this earlier that we have to be separate. The Lord is saying, come from among them. Don't be like the world. Don't be like the people that aren't pleasing to me. I'm calling you to be holy. I'm calling you to be separate. I'm calling you to not desire the things of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. I'm calling you out of that, my people. I'm calling you out, daughters of Zion, daughters of the Most High. 
And it goes on to say, touch no unclean thing. This makeup, this jewelry, all these things, perfumes, all these things come from the marine kingdom. The marine kingdom is a seductive demonic kingdom. This is a seducing kingdom. You think about when we wear perfume, we're, we're wearing it to attract something. We're attracting spirits. Everything is spiritual. Life is spiritual. And so we're attracting demonic spirits and other humans to be drawn to us with these perfumes. It's all about seduction. You know, it's all about drawing attention to you. It's all about self. It's all it's all self-promotion. It's all boastful. And the word says, boast only in the Lord. We have nothing else to boast for, but these material items make us boastful in ourselves, boastful in the material things that we can acquire. But he says, touch no unclean thing and I will receive you. We can't truly get into the presence of God until we're willing to let go of these unclean things. We haven't fully been received because we're still holding on to the world. If God's not going to force us to stop, if we want to cling to the things of the world, part of his love is giving us free will. So if that's what we choose, that's what we choose. But he wants to receive us. So if we put these unclean things down, we can step into our calling and we can be received by him. You know, I'd be wondering like, why is stuff not going right for me? Why has the Lord not sent me my husband? Why hasn't he done this and that? We're asking God why he hasn't done something, but he's like, you haven't done anything that I told you to do. You're not trying to be led by my spirit and by my Holy Spirit. You're being led by your flesh. You're doing exactly what I told you not to do. And you all, you know, that verse 18 right there, it says, I will receive you and will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and my daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Think about our earthly fathers. I know my earthly dad does not want me to be walking around showing all my good. He'll say something to me about that. How much more does our father in heaven want us to be covered and be modest? You know, we have to have even more respect for him. The author and finisher of our salvation, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, is, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are chosen. We are a royal priesthood while we are here. At any moment, we should be able to witness. We should be able to evangelize. We should be able to do deliverance on somebody. But who's going to know to come to us if we look like just another person on the street? You know, there's a different look to us when we have modesty. And, you know, it's only been a couple of days and I've seen it already, you know, but this modesty, it creates a humbleness in you because it strips away the things that you found pride in. Now it's just you and you have nothing to hide behind. It creates humbleness. It creates a meek spirit. Romans chapter 12, verse two, it says, and be not complacent conform to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We're not supposed to be conforming to the world, transforming to look like the world. We're supposed to be transformed to look like holiness, a representation of God. So if you find yourself looking like the world, no, God's going to start dealing with you on the way that you look. You know, God's had grace and mercy with me. He's been trying to work with me for years. Don't bank on, oh, I got time to get this right. I got time to work on this because we just don't know. You never know. All right, last scripture and we're about to start going through these videos. Proverbs 31 verse 25. Strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. You all, I'm not gonna lie and tell you that this was easy doing this, that it's been easy walking around trying to figure out how to work with just me. It's not easy, but that scripture says strength and honor her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. We sacrifice now. Our time here on earth is just like, can go just like that. So we sacrifice now so that we can reap when it's time to be with Jesus. We have everlasting life and not everlasting destruction. So we sacrifice now for eternity. We're going to rejoice in time to come. And those that refuse to take heed to the warnings that God is putting out there, you might have the opposite of a rejoicing, but a weeping and gnashing of teeth for eternity because you chose to impress the world, impress a man that doesn't care about you, people that don't know you just to get a glance. Don't choose that over dressing in modesty, modesty to 
and press the most high who is from everlasting to everlasting that we have security in that actually loves us enough to tell us my daughters come out of her come out of Babylon stop looking like the great whore of Babylon now let's go through the videos so this first video you see it's maxi dresses some of them are maxis some of them aren't they're fitted everything's fitted mm. so yeah very fitted dresses cling to everything there's lace low-cut dresses got rid of those I'm grabbing all that stuff throwing it in the trash here's some more tube dress with the high split just all things that are really clinging halters none of these things are pleasing to god just you know materials that cling to you and show just to show everything that you have tossing all that stuff all going in the trash you see it's still tags and everything next one another scrunchy dress two dresses all form-fitted things you know super cute on but not pleasing to god everything going in the trash Here's some swim stuff, cover up, sheer things, everything I was wearing to the beach and and all that, completely inappropriate, no way around it. Shame, shame, shame. Dresses, two piece dresses, short dresses, all kind of stuff that you can't tell, but that one, that orange one and blue one is an opening in the middle. rid of all of that some more dresses back completely out just tops halters or set tops just you know things that i bought for that trip that in the trash all brand new tags on it in the trash here's my beloved jeans those are just the ones that I had here, but got rid of them. You see, I don't have too many with rips in them because God had me get rid of most of those. So it's only two pairs there with rips. But all of them are gone because I'm not wearing pants anymore. So it's going all the way. Here's the leggings that I still had left, most of which I wasn't wearing anymore. There's the sweatpants that I bought to replace the leggings so that I, I thought that would be more pleasing to God, but apparently we're not supposed to be wearing pants and I'm willing to let it go because my salvation, my eternity is worth more. Here's all these tops, these low cut tops with the deep Vs. Like I said, I wear stuff with my belly button out and these are reformed. So these are a little bit higher than they were, but you see crochet stuff and all kind of stuff. Here's makeup my um, vanity altar because that's exactly what it is and you know getting rid of stuff and again I'm somewhere temporary right now so this is you know I couldn't even be on a travel contract without bringing my vanity mirror without bringing a little tiny table to have and to have all my things here are some more things the Lord had me get rid of I thought that they were okay but I guess they're not because they're cropped and they won't cover me completely. That'll draw attention to the hip area and and because they're costly, so that might fall under costly apparel, some of them. Some of them were inexpensive, but the Lord made me get rid of them. And I had them hanging up because I was fighting to keep them, but I was like, you know what? It's not worth it. Here's some more of those faux leather leggings. That's all the ray, a whole bunch of crop leather jackets, the fur draw attention, crop sweaters. And it's just some of the stuff that I still have with me just for all seasons, you know, and I'm very short. So I always wear high-waisted pants. And then I would have a cropped shirt because it would still touch the pants because my torso area is so short, but still not appropriate. Had to get rid of them. And here's more costly attire. Everything that you see here is real. That's a Burberry scar. Louis Vuitton, uh, never full bag with the wallet. Gucci purse, Louis Vuitton backpack. All designer glasses, Burberry, Gucci, Prada. Fendi shoes, love those. This stuff, you know, anybody who buys this stuff, a whole bunch of Tory, Tory Burch sandals because she was like, the, that was like the only sandals I'll wear plus those Fendi ones. So all that stuff I threw in the trash, didn't sell it, I threw it away because it's costly attire and I wanted to show my dedication to God. Here's more stuff. I still had some fingernail polish left there, got rid of that. 
got rid of all the jewelry that I had. That is just a little um, thing that I would keep in my car just in case for makeup because you're not going to catch me slipping without makeup. You see expensive stuff in there, MAC and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, just more stuff that I got rid of. Here's more stuff I learned through testimonies that God doesn't want us altering our hair. And I would notice that while I was fasting here recently, the Lord would make me stop doing my hair. And so I wear, I straighten my hair. Sometimes I wear it natural. You've seen it in other videos where I would just usually have it pulled back. But now, since I know that I won't be straightening my hair anymore, I'm trying to find other styles to do with my natural hair instead of just pulling it back in a ponytail. And so you also see an electric eyelash curler that was another thing the lord dealt with me on eyelashes i used to wear the eyelash extensions and then the lord had me stop wearing that and so i'm like okay well i'll just get some of those short strips that you can glue on and i was doing that for a while the lord made me feel uncomfortable with that so then i got eyelash curlers and i'm like okay well i'm just gonna curl my natural lashes and i'm gonna use mascara and the lord dealt with me on that and so i'm like okay well i'm not gonna use i just kind of you know i was kind of just floating there and then i'm like you know what what if i just perm my eyelashes so i don't have to use the eyelash curler just all these ways to get around still accomplishing what i wanted to do oh yeah so and i don't know if anybody knows anything about flat irons but those are babyliss or baby bliss flat irons which are very expensive but yeah so all that stuff went away because only natural hairstyles now and also this is the lash lift uh kit that i got off amazon i was super excited about it because it actually worked but in the trash and here's the perfumes i got rid of prada burberry um nina richie just i love that dolce and gabbana a whole bunch of dolce and gabbana valentino vince commuto and that's a tom ford one so all that stuff in the trash and there's the blow dryer I threw away, which is another expensive one. That's a Babyliss um, uh, blow dryer. So it's all quality stuff, all in the trash. And here's a picture of all the bags that of clothes that I got rid of. And the next are shoes that I got rid of. So here's all, I was obsessed with clear shoes. Love Steve Madden because they're comfortable and they fit my feet, but just a whole bunch of clear shoes, pumps, just all kind of shoes. Basically, they're, they're all like brand new for the most part. And all of those are in the trash now because I'm not trying to draw attention to myself or get the attention of anybody i want the attention of the most high here's the boots that i got rid of and this is just i still have tons and tons of stuff that's actually at home like i said i'm um, away on a travel contract but i said i still had to bring all this stuff with me i couldn't do it without it but you see the the high heel boots and the boots that go up to the thigh and all this stuff the yeezys you know god had me get rid of all of those the the heel combat boots and all that kind of stuff and a lot of those shoes I hadn't even worn all expensive but the Lord had me get rid of them and this is what I was left with and even some of these I still the Lord had me get rid of those too and I have those little brown ones those brown heels because it's a fat heel and it's not a seductive shoe but again the Lord might have me get rid of that when I go to try and wear it so yeah I don't have many options and so here's the bag of shoes with everything in it that is going to and here's the one with the boots and everything. All the stuff is going in the trash. So. so all that is gone. And this is a picture of a failed attempt of me trying to wear a wrap. It is very sad, but it's me trying. Yeah, that is that. After I did all this, I was praying in tongues, thinking that everything was done. I was looking for a personal product. And I realized like I didn't have any left here, but I knew I had some of this personal product in my car. So I was going to go outside to look for one. But I felt like the Lord was telling me, no, I don't want you to go outside. 
And I'm like, okay, so I, because I have a lot of suitcases with me because I'm traveling for work, I decided to look in the front pockets because I was stuffed random stuff there. When I went to go check those front pockets of the suitcase to see if there were any of this personal product in there that I needed, I found a weave ponytail that I had tried to make about three years ago, three and a half, four years ago. And I would have never known that that was there if God hadn't told me to not go outside and to look in the closet for the product that I was looking for. And so I was like, oh my, that thing has been there for years. I've been lugging this ponytail, this weave ponytail around with me this whole time. And the Lord wanted it gone. So he had me find it. He sh so I threw that thing away and I, I prayed, you know, against anything that's connected with it because I've been watching and learning that all of this stuff weaves and all kind of stuff there's spirits attached to it this stuff like I said comes from the marine kingdom and they're putting curses on it that's why you have people wearing weaves and stuff and you're losing your hair because there's curses on this stuff you start having problems people are have given testimonies about being attacked when they had bought certain types of weaves and stuff like that, but all of them are unpleasing to God. Let's just wear our natural hair, no matter what type it is. The beauty is in the diversity of our hair. So just be natural. You know, some people have straight hair. Some people have curly hair. Some people have wavy hair. Some people have kinky coiled hair, but it is all beautiful. And my hair was curlier, but because I straightened, flat ironed my hair so long, now it barely curls. It's just more like a wave. I don't even know if you can really see it, but you know, the sun's going down, so I'm losing light. So it's really hard to see, but you know, I've destroyed my curl pattern because of vanity. So yeah. And I just want to end this with a couple more things. God is requiring purity and holiness from us. So I got rid of all that stuff. I sacrificed it all for God because he gave so much more for us. And I want to do that for him. And so when you think about something being pure, you think about it basically being stripped down to its most natural state, its original state with no impurities, no additives to it. That's how God wants us. He wants us in our purest state, the way that he created us, the way that he required that I come to him when I called on his name. He wanted me to come with nothing dealing with the world on me, just what he created. And so 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8 through 12, it says, For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having a promise of life that now is and of that which is to come. Y'all, we got to stop focusing on trying to do squats and building up our butts and all this other stuff. We got to stop doing it. It says bodily exercise profiteth little. Let's exercise our spirit, man. Let's exercise the things of God that he's told us to do. Let's put it into practice and stop worrying about the outside of us. And verse nine says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in a living God who is the savior of all men, especially of those that believe. We're gonna suffer reproach for us changing our looks, for us trying to make the outside match what's happening on the inside. But that's why I said it's important for us to encourage each other and to not tear each other down. Don't tell your sister she's doing too much because she's willing to sacrifice all these things. Don't do that. Encourage your sister if she's trying to sacrifice things to look holy for God. Let that sister that's doing it be an example for you, someone to look up to. You know what? She's giving this up. I'm not going to judge her. I need to be like her. Verse 11 says, these things command and teach 12. Let no man despise thy youth. Be thou an example of the believers in the word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. No, we have to be an example to the world. We represent Christ here on earth. We are his body. We are his bride. You know, there's another scripture that says that his name is blasphemed because of us. Because we're looking like the world, we're making Christians look bad. We're making believing in the most high that offers salvation to us. We make it look bad because we're choosing to act like the world. We don't look any different to people that are in the world. So they're like, why? Why should I believe that that's, that is the true God? Look at them. And I looked up that word where it says impurity. That word purity is the Greek word hagnia. And it means purity, sinless of life. Clean, cleanliness, chastity, purity. You go to the root word to that in the Thayer's lexicon, it says exciting, reverence, venerable, sacred, pure, pure from carnality, chaste. It says modest there, 
It says pure from every fault, immaculate, clean. And, and the strong says properly clean, innocent, modest, perfect, chaste, clean and pure. This is what God is calling us to be. He wants us to be a bride without spot or wrinkle. The makeup is a spot. It's a huge blemish. I heard somebody's testimony has said that when we put on makeup and, and all this stuff, we look like clowns to God in the spirit. We think we look beautiful to the world, but in truth, in the spirit, we look like something that is repulsive to God. So don't don't get comfortable thinking that God is going to compromise his word and his will for us, for us to continue what we're doing, for us to be like, oh, God will have grace. I can keep on wearing this stuff. I can keep on being the same person. God is not going to change what he expects for us. Okay, it got so dark. I had to turn the light on. The sun was going down. But anyways, God is not going to compromise his word and what he said. God doesn't change for man. Man has to change for God. So God's word is the standard. The people around us, they are not our standard. Just because you see somebody else in church looking like the world doesn't mean it's okay for you because God is going to judge you according to his word, not according to what the people around you look like, because he's going to say, I told you to be different. I told you to be peculiar. I told you to be set apart, not to look at them. You keep your eyes on me. And so I'm ending with this Philippians chapter two, verse 12. It says, wherefore my beloved as ye have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling never get too comfortable work it out with fear and trembling don't think that you're okay once you start thinking you're okay know that you're in a red zone keep on working keep on striving keep letting the holy spirit do a sanctifying process in you keep going and be encouraged so i just want to say a quick cover I have for this for the first time so I never thought about it before but okay all right let's bow our heads dear Heavenly Father I just come before you right now on behalf of my sisters and daughters of the Most High Lord I thank you for putting this on my heart Lord I thank you for loving me enough loving them enough to begin to raise awareness of your standard of holiness of your standard of beauty and that is us in the way that you created us, Lord. That is beautiful because you made no mistake with us. So I thank you for your Holy Spirit moving on my sisters through the world, tearing down the lie that the outside doesn't matter, Lord. Thank you for lighting a fire for us to look pleasing to you, to have our inside match the outside, to no longer make excuses to stay the same, to not deceive ourselves. But I thank you for your grace and your mercy, your sanctifying work. I just thank you for this new journey because it is a journey, Lord. Thank you that you are with us every step of, away, of the way. Thank you for encouraging us. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, your loving kindness, your long suffering with us stiff necked people. Thank you for your righteousness that covers us, Lord, because we are a wretched people and we don't even know the depth of how bad that we need you. I thank you for continuing to reveal yourself to us, Lord. I thank you for taking us from glory to glory and keeping us in your righteous right hand, Lord. I just praise you and I worship you because you are God. You are Yah. You are the Most High. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Yeshua's name, in Yesu's name, in Yahusha's name, we pray. Amen. All right, that is it. Thank you for watching this. Please like and subscribe. Pass this on. Send it to your sisters if you've started this journey, Lord. Y'all, let's just keep encouraging each other. We are a small community. The Lord says that it is a remnant. And the closer we draw to him, he'll start revealing more things that he wants us to get rid of out of our lives. And we have to be open to do that. So thank you for watching. Blessings to you. And until next time, be blessed.